Hello everyone. Uh, I'm driving home and the whole day I was thinking um, this should be the last uh, video of me talking about the World Cup on my drive home and I want to make a team by team review because you know there were things that I haven't really caught uh, while thinking out loud while driving and maybe let's make, make it a little bit more systematic and I run through the teams one by one um, from group A to group H and I give you my thoughts that I have on each of each one of these uh, it also you know gives it a bit, bit more structured I also will take a slightly more slightly different route home it will not take much longer but it might be <laughs> more scenic although you don't see much anyway also I'm wearing my new Uruguay shirt uh, first one that I have you haven't seen me in that one it feels quite comfy I'm gonna make some videos about uh, World Cup shirts that I have uh, via video and supplement this with the vlog and there will be of course another video at least one coming with a statistical review of the World Cup I have the numbers I just want to make a nice presentation so you can I can run through the numbers and give you another review of how the 32 teams performed and also a little bit looking at upsets from a statistical point of view which matches were the biggest upsets uh, I guess we can all, all agree that Germany against Korea will be the one but let's start at group A um, and yeah Uruguay won that group so let's start with Uruguay uh, it was a weird tournament for Uruguay I think the first two uh, showings were kind of a little bit uh, downer I mean the one against Egypt was typically Uruguay solid in defense and then they make the goal in the last minute where also the defense was uh, doing it and that was that I mean it was a classic Uruguay opener that they only made a goal against Saudi Arabia this was for me a big disappointment I honestly didn't see much of the game I just heard the first half I had a big meeting afterwards um, but just the fact that they saw Saudi Arabia got five uh, from Russia and Uruguay only manages one and that was kind of a lucky free kick by Su Suarez was a little bit odd but then they got it together the next two games were absolutely stunning uh, they quickly disposed of Russia they um, played the best their best game of the tournament against Portugal uh, that performance you know people have favored Portugal a little bit ahead of the game I thought those were two very similar teams but yeah Uruguay two star strikers where Portugal had only one so uh, absolute stunning performance especially by Cavani but then also similar to Neymar uh, four years ago against Colombia Cavani leaves the field injured and yeah then you have a Uruguay team that is handicapped and had one chance to score against France France yeah they tried to be physical with France it worked maybe for half an hour then France got their goal then they probably should have equalized and Yoris made Yoris made a great save there uh, and at the second goal everyone knew it was done so if you would ask me and the overall grade for Uruguay I would uh, I'm giving letter grade I would give Uruguay B uh, with one A plus performance, the one against Portugal. Second in the group was Russia, the big surprise. Um, they started the tournament out great. Um, the one thing about Russia for all these um, games is they were running and 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 running. And running, and running. Their uh, strength was kind of surprising. Um, the first two performances yes they took advantage of a soft draw but they really got everyone behind them and earned their victories the one against Saudi Arabia was maybe a tad too high but then on the other side um, they the loss to Uruguay was also a tad too high so a group stage they had qualified even before they had to play against Uruguay so that was nice for them and then they frustrated Spain well, I mean fr Spain frustrated itself but they did what they could do against Spain and that was that uh, I even would say this they deservedly won because they for a few minutes played well against Spain uh, put them on the back foot 
<laughs> and Spain, if you cannot uh, deal against uh, Russia, I'm sorry, you don't deserve to go on. Uh, against Croatia, yeah, Croatia should have won in 90 minutes. Perisic hitting the upright uh, early, in, uh, kind of midway through the second half, not early. Um, they were ahead with a nice goal. Croatia should have turned it around at that point. And we would not have had overtime. Uh, that they came back shows the morale in the Russian squad. But that was more or less it. Um, I think Croatia deserved to go on. They were ne not necessarily the much better team, but I think when I take chances and over quality of play, Croatia was the superior team. So overall, I think Russia is also one of the more surprising teams of this World Cup. I also would give them kind of a B because they did well within their own uh, opportunities. Um, the loss against uh, Uruguay weighs heavily and then, yeah, against Croatia, I think they felt they can do more, but uh, they didn't m really do much and, you know, they were a, a limited team. It was definitely not the greatest performance. Now, let's go to the other two teams in the group, the ones that got eliminated. Uh, third was Saudi Arabia with uh, abysmal showing against Russia. Yes, they lost by at least two goals too many, but um, in, in the end, you can't lose by five. They acquitted themselves well in the other two games, even winning against Egypt, uh, where they had two penalties on one was saved. So yeah, um, not a great showing, but I think they acquitted themselves. I think C minus, D plus, somewhere there, I would give us all the Arabia. Egypt was one big disappointment. It was clear if Mohamed Salah cannot play, but then there were also some outside noises hampering their progress. A little bit um, yeah it was clear that if Salah is not playing then uh, Egypt is, for, is in for it for a long time it should have probably gotten a point against uh, Uruguay uh, the way the game was going it was so much a zero zero um, against Russia just when you thought that uh, Egypt maybe can get something Russia was lethal and made goals out of the few chances that they had and then losing to Saudi Arabia I really think that is the big disappointment so I would give Egypt a D minus if not an F um, I would expect more from a team that is always among the premier teams in Africa that go gets us to group B <laughs> what did we say ahead of the group? There are two clear favorites and two clear outsiders. And yeah, that's the way the group ended. But boy, the way was not easy. Uh, let's start with the group winner, Spain. Uh, wonderful first game. That was one of the best games of the entire tournament. Uh, then against um, Iran. That was the next game. You could already see it. I made really hard work out of that. Uh, Iran very well could have made an equalizer. You could already see that Spain, uh, they still had kind of this idea going forward that seemed to work. But the backside was just horrendous. Uh, the Spanish defense uh, remind me a lot about uh, the defense in 2014. Just not safe. Their goalkeeper, horrible. I mean, he didn't have to do much, but at least save something. I mean, most of the shots he probably couldn't save uh, because they were well uh, done. I mean, just look at what Ronaldo did. But then he made the horrible mistake against Ronaldo as well uh, for Portugal's second goal in the opener. Uh, and I think what Morocco did to them, you better put the cloak of silence over. Um, they scored a wonderful goal once they were down one nothing, and they scored a very contentious late equalizer. I'm overall very disappointing. And then you have a Russian team that is defensive and with all the skill that you have, you have no plan. You pass yourself to death. I was just boring and horrible. Uh, you just, uh, it was a complete failure. 
just because they played so well against Portugal. And, uh, and if you go back to, to my videos, I said even after the second game, that Spain is still the one that looks like the most team to me. Uh, there they still had a plan, but they completely lost the plot. And yeah, that was Spain's undoing. Because they played well against Portugal, so at the beginning they were actually okay, -ish. I would give Spain a D. But there was so much more possible. Um, firing the coach ahead of the tournament was one of the most stupid things that you could ever do. Uh, and I don't even blame the federation president for that. Uh, I blame Real Madrid. The big Spanish team that is, stands for all Spanishness in the world uh, ruined the Spanish World Cup. I think you guys have, have to say that. Then Portugal, uh, also very wonderful first game. Um, then Ronaldo makes even the early goal, has four goals after about 100 minutes played. And everyone talks about the big superstar. And then you didn't hear much of Ronaldo anymore uh, from that moment on. It's a similar curve like with Spain. Although Morocco could have gotten an equalizer against Port Portugal, but Portugal played very, you know, solid there was a I mini mean, was not spectacular it was a little bit like france but like a poor version of france i think that's maybe the best way to describe it um and then against iran i think they just lost the nerves i mean they got their goal and then iran threw everything at them uh it was weird from all accounts how this game went. I think the, the, that it ended in a draw was well deserved, but I think Morocco also should have gotten a draw against Portugal. And then they had a pretty good showing against um, Uruguay, but Uruguay was just a better team. It was not that I found that Portugal was so disappointing, but that Uruguay was that good in that game. So for that reason, I would give Portugal a solid C. Nothing specta uh, spectacular at the beginning, then a little bit flaming out. It could be even a C+. Um, Iran, yeah, overshot all expectations. Uh, they won very, very lucky against Morocco. Morocco was the better team then. Uh, but against the two big boys, Iran had really two good showings. Uh, the squad is, of course, limited, but given uh, what they have at their disposal, really good showing of, of uh, Iran. I would give them a B minus. Morocco, yes, you gotta make your chances. Morocco, I would even say from watching them play, they were probably the second best team in this group. I think they could have eliminated Spain or Portugal quite easily. I don't uh, Play-wise, Morocco was spectacular, but you know, you have three clear chances against uh, Iran. Um, you are in the game against Portugal, but Portugal basically shut you down a little bit. I think this, this was... Maybe poor, I, I would actually I, I, I say just from watching them play, it would have, if it was fair, it would have been Portugal, Morocco, Spain, Iran, Spain, choose what you want. Um, and then against Spain, yeah, probably you, you, you weren't lucky, but you would have deserved a victory. I think it, Morocco was kind of symptomatic of the African showing uh, promise, but like an execution. And for that reason, you know, the way they played, I want to give uh, Iran a, a, a Morocco a B plus. But I think overall you got to give them at most a C, maybe even a C minus, because goal scoring is a vital part of soccer. Just cannot get around it. So that gets us to Group C. We start with the world champions. <laughs> what can you say? Not spectacular, but winning it. Uh, I've said enough about France already. I think they were a true team. They were a lot, uh, showed a lot of restraint, but they also had, had a lot of class. They were the best team. Uh, the latest after the quarterfinal against Ur Uruguay, I had the feeling this is France's tournament to lose. They looked like a future champion. And with that, I wanna. I think I'm gonna give France an A minus just because uh, they only showed us 20 minutes, half an hour of good play. Really good play, exciting play, and the rest was all uh, methodically. Uh, Denmark, they got their big win 
um, against Peru in the opener where they were not the better team but they got lucky they struggled against uh, Australia although they scored a beautiful goal by Ericsson uh, that was one of the highlights of the group stage but I think they could have lost to to Australia at that point uh, might have helped Peru a lot to be honest um, and then yeah against France uh, you cannot really say any, anything about Gabriel because no one wanted to play that game and yeah they acquitted themselves well against Croatia I think they kept the more talented side just at bay enough to go to penalties where we had the big Schmeichel show where he eventually lost um, and I still think that Denmark with the hot goalkeeper they should have gone against the reason and go second I really think that this would have been uh, better for Denmark so yeah they achieved what they wanted for that uh, C even a C plus because they could have easily made it to the um, quarterfinals if they win the penalty shootout and if Ericsson would show a little bit better but I think as a team Denmark played quite well so I give them a C plus uh, I want to give so uh, such a good grade to Peru but you gotta make goals what I said for Peru you can say one to one uh, what I said about Morocco you can say one to one about Peru and I give the Peruvian fans A plus best fans in the World Cup um, the play of Peru was Peru was one of the most attractive teams to watch every Peruvian game was a joy to watch Unfortunately, I saw, I saw only two, but even the one against Australia, when I saw the highlights, that was a joy to watch. Yeah, so uh, good on you, Peru. Uh, you you enriched the tournament. We just didn't see enough of you. And yeah, for that, it's so hard. This is hard because I have personal connections with Peru. C plus. I think that sounds about right to me. Uh, a B is too high for the simple fact that I think uh, you gotta make the goals. Yes, you were unlucky, but you know you had in your own hands. You had a penalty that you could have easily made. Um, don't make a mess of it. If you have a penalty, you should at least hit the goal. Don't pull it over the goal. That's what I can say. So yeah, C plus I give to Peru and Australia. <laughs> uh, my fighting Aussies. I really, th I have to check. I, I, I really think I didn't wear the Australia shirt too much, and you sh for sure not in the video. I think. Tell me if I'm wrong. Um, yeah, for Australia, they were in it up until, but you know, they were outclassed by Peru. They should have won against Denmark, and they should have gotten a draw against France. So it's also missed opportunities. I want to give them a C. Uh, not a very... No one talked ahead of the tournament much about Australia. But no one was disappointed that they left so early. They actually were longer in it than most people thought. And so for that I think a C is uh, appropriate. Now we get to the group, <laughs> to the most interesting group. Croatia won that one and Croatia exceeded all expectations. I give uh, Croatia a straight A despite their flaws in um, overtime. But the group stage they managed to uh, perfectly. Excellent showing against Ar Argentina, which was at first a tight game once uh, Caballero made the big uh, error. Uh, Croatia was cruising. So. Um, you could see right there and then that this is a squad that you can count on. Uh, it was a little bit disappointing that they couldn't finish off Russia uh, and also th the, what they showed against Denmark was a little bit disappointing but then they made up for it by pulling energies out in the final two games against England and France. It seemed that Croatia is one of those teams that uh, grows with the task and so they did and we have to be eternally grateful that they made this final a great final. Uh, without Croatia there, there won't be six goals. Yes, they were naive, but overall what they achieved, this is an achievement of a lifetime. I think Croatia deserves A, if not an A+. I think the A+, I don't give 
just because they uh, had to go through two penalty shootouts against weaker opponents. But that's basically it. Uh, also, they didn't lose a game until the final. Think about that. That's also a great, great, great achievement. Uh, the second was Argentina. Boy, what a disaster. They, the, the goal by, Me uh, by Messi against Nigeria was probably one of the prettiest. The pass to that goal was one of the prettiest goals and the way the Messi controlled it. Yeah, you could actually see what they could do. But they were frustrated by Iceland. <sighs> yeah. I would expect that Messi makes the penalty. I would expect that Argentina beats Iceland. Um, those are the, I called the 1-1 one -one because I thought they could give them problems. You completely blew it, completely blew it against Croatia. Uh, you saw already against Iceland, Caballero is such a shaky goalkeeper. I think every time the ball got close to him, you had the feeling that uh, there's no way he's gonna make a save. And you saw it then against uh, Croatia. He made the big error uh, and the result in the first goal and then Argentina, you can see, they gave up on the spot. Uh, and that's the biggest indictment I can give to them. Uh, they pulled it somehow together against Nigeria, but it was... <laughs> uh, they played well the first half and then they almost blew it again and then Rojo scores a goal. Uh, I think they don't they themselves don't know how they made it but they went down in flames against uh, France um, that was the one poor defensive showing by France where they gave up three goals against Argentina Di Maria great shot um, the 2-1 was kind of scrappy and then yeah also the, the third one but you could also see that if France just plays a little bit against uh, this defense even if they would have beaten France, they would not have gone much further. I think Uruguay would have beaten them, uh, actually quite handily. Because they had two decent showings, uh, I give them a D, but a D, but almost leaning D minus. But I think I give it D. You show, a li you saw a little bit what they could do, but not more. Nigeria, one of the unlucky ones. Um, yeah, against Croatia, they didn't show much. Croatia beat them without having to do much. Uh, they really were convincing against Iceland. And yeah, against Argentina, you almost have to say they got unlucky. It was unlucky that they didn't get the draw that they needed. So yeah, I'm gonna give Nigeria because they're a young team a C plus. Uh, they were one of the more entertaining sides and with a little bit, a bit more luck they could have made it out of the group stage and probably would have deserved to do so. And then Iceland, well first team, if you get a draw against Messi and co, uh, that should put you already high. Uh, it was a little bit disappointing what you showed against uh, Nigeria because there you were outclassed, but then if anyone has seen the highlights of uh, Iceland against Croatia, they threw everything against the second string Croatian team uh, and made a good showing. So I think despite only getting one point from uh, expectations and style of play, they were actually rugged, the Icelanders that we actually learned to love at Euro 2016. Was it spectacular? No. Could they have achieved more? Probably. Uh, I think so. It was actually a little bit a loss that Iceland didn't do more. Uh, so yeah, Iceland. What great shall I give Iceland? Um, thinking out loud. Again, I think I want to give Iceland a C minus because I thought they could do a little bit more. Well, I think it's already a pretty long video. I don't want to make a 50 minute video, so I'm gonna stop it here now for the first 16 teams. We had the world champions already in here. We are all, all, all already the other finalists. Said a lot. And yeah, I'll keep going. I'll have a second part of the video soon. So it will be two more. Hope you enjoyed this one so far. Let me know what you thought about all these teams. Give them your personal grades. I would like to hear that, how you saw it. Uh, are my grades off? Probably, who knows. And yeah, 
I guess I will talk to you very, very, very soon with the next 16 teams. Until then. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.